I love your introduction though, Miss Kim. It's so beautiful. Hey. <laughs> okay, we got Ashley here from New Jersey and she is bringing boundaries, personal boundaries, but you gotta always check in on them boundaries that we personally got to respect of others. And so here we are. All right, hello everyone. Um, what I first wanted to do is start off with the definition of boundaries. Um, so I took to Google because Boundaries mean everything differently for people personally, but universally a boundary is defined as a limit of subject or sphere of activity. Um, another definition that, that I found was something that indicates a border or limit. Um, and that, that definition came from the free dictionary. So we spent a lot of time talking about working on our shadow, you know, doing your spiritual, your personal work, looking at your traumas, unpacking them, admitting your faults and wrongdoings, dealing with your emotions and all of that. But then afterwards, you gotta set boundaries, not just for yourself, but also for other people. Most importantly, you set those boundaries for yourself within. So you unpack a trauma, you recognize those triggers, and then what do you do? Just let people trigger you again? Absolutely not. You have to let people know like, no, ma'am, you will not talk to me like that, sir. You can exit stage left because I'm not interested. I'm not interested with the way that you're treating me. And you have to understand that there is now a boundary. There is now a limit to what I will accept from you. And that's not always comfortable. I can say for myself, um, definitely learning to set my own boundaries for people and to speak up and let people know, um, yeah, no, we're not doing that anymore. That's not okay. Um, and to piggyback a little bit off of Jasmine's class, once you believe in yourself, it's not difficult to speak up and let people know what your boundaries mm -hmm. are because you stand firmly within who you are and people just need to either get with it or get lost. And that doesn't mean that they're lost forever. It just means you're not where you need to be to meet me where I stand right now. And if you wanna meet me where I stand, you got some work to do on your own. Um, so in doing research in these boundaries, um, the first thing I thought about is like, you have to work with your inner voice because your inner voice is what you show to the outside world, whether you realize it or not. So <clears throat> one example I thought about is, you know, if as a child, um, you get told maybe you're too fat, right? You adopt that, you make that agreement that, okay, I'm too fat. And you take that into your 20s, your 30s, your 40s. And that's how you talk to yourself. When you see yourself eat cookies, oh my gosh, I'm still just so fat. I can't believe I'm doing this. Um, when you look at yourself in the mirror and you put on a shirt, oh, I'm so fat, I can't wear this. So within you, you have now created a boundary and told yourself I'm fat and that's not healthy. So when you unpack that trauma of realizing, you know, people told me this as a child, this is my inner child, it wasn't justified. I need to accept her or accept him because this is for men as well. Once you accept that and you accept yourself for who you are, you set a boundary within yourself. I will not talk negative to myself. I will not say those things. So then, you're in a relationship with somebody or you're hanging out with your friends and your friends say, oh, you look a little fat today. No, I don't. No, I do not. Because what they don't know is that that triggers something within you and affects your self-esteem. Because now this is your friend, somebody you love, somebody you trust, somebody who is in your inner circle, maybe. And if they're saying it, it's because they've heard you say it and they think it's okay. So now that you've created this healthy boundary within yourself of saying, I don't wanna talk like that about myself and I don't wanna hear that from other people. I need to be supported. So you, once you train yourself to be different in setting that healthy boundary, you then train other people. Like, it's not okay to say that I'm fat. You don't have to say it nasty. You can be super nice about it. Like, I know you were just joking, but could you not say that to me anymore? Because it makes me feel uncomfortable. And it is you being vulnerable, but it's also telling people 
no, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not going to that place anymore. Um, the other really important thing that um, Ms. Kim just spoke to me about is recognizing boundaries that other people set within themselves. Um, and we have to be accountable for that and we have to be mindful of that. So we as people have to be aware of crossing boundaries that others have in place when dealing with them. It is imperative that we list, not only listen, but also pay attention to how people react to the things that we do and say. Because based on someone's reactions, whether they're verbal or nonverbal, it's gonna let you know that if you've crossed the boundary for them. So somebody might not say, hey, I don't like what you said to me. But if they've previously been talking to you, smiling, laughing, and joking, and you say something they don't like, or you do something they don't like, and they become very closed off, you've crossed the boundary. You've triggered them. You've hit a nerve. And you have to be mindful of that because you want people to respect you, but you also have to respect them and understand that there will be moments that are not comfortable. There will be things that you say that people don't agree with, that people don't want you to go into that area anymore. Um, just from my own personal experience with my husband, at one point he had been gaining weight and I was joking with him and I was like, oh, you're getting a little heavy around the midsection. And I had just been joking with him. We both joke about it. You know, we both got comfortable. We put on that love weight. And he said to me, you know, out of anger one day, you keep calling me fat and I don't like it. And I said, I didn't recognize that what I was saying to you was making you feel uncomfortable about the way that you look. And I'm, I'm sorry about that. Like, I'm genuinely apologizing because I didn't, I wasn't aware. I won't ever do it again. I didn't know that it was something that was bothering you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't recognizing how it was making him feel uncomfortable, how maybe previously he wasn't too, like he didn't care about not wearing a shirt around me, but then he was always wearing a shirt. Or if I would poke him, he would like put his hand around his stomach and these things weren't, I weren't noticing. And even another experience I have, um, one of my good friends, um, I usually babysit everybody's baby because I end up being a stay at home mom some, at some point in my mommy career, unfortunately. But fortunately, because I love my little one being home with her. And um, one of my good friends said to me, we about to start calling you Mother Ashley. You gonna watch all the kids. And I said, no, that's not what I'm gonna be. I might be Mother Ashley and I might watch your kids from time to time, but I'm not becoming a permanent babysitter because I don't like what that does to me. That puts me in the house, that puts me not out enjoying the things that I wanna do. So while it was uncomfortable for me to then let one of my good friends know like, hey, I can't watch her anymore, even though I love your child and I enjoy the time I spend with her. I can't do it because it's limiting what I wanna do in my life. If I have her and I wanna get up and go, I can't. Cause if I don't have a car seat or I gotta worry about if she's gonna you know, sleep in the car or where I'm going, is it kid friendly? Those are things that I, I just, at a point in my life, I don't wanna have to worry about. Um, there are also unhealthy boundaries that you can set with people. And those unhealthy boundaries are for example, you let your friends walk all over you. That's an unhealthy boundary. And you don't realize that you've set it. You let your friends use and abuse and walk all over you and take you for granted. And it puts you in a place where then you're pouring from an empty cup. Because mm -hmm. you're constantly saying, yes, I can do that. Yes, I can do this. Yes, it's okay. Yes, um, I don't mind doing that. Oh, you need me to do that for you? Absolutely. Oh, you need the shirt I just bought last week? No problem. Maybe you haven't worn the shirt yet. And now your friend wants it and she's using it. Or they're taking you for granted. So now it's unhealthy. It's not a happy situation. But maybe you don't believe in yourself. Maybe you don't trust yourself enough to, one, change the behavior. Because it comes from, it comes from a place of always saying yes to finally saying no. And sometimes people don't know how to take that no. 
So maybe you don't always say no. Maybe you just get quiet and hope that they figure it out their own way. But if you don't ever firmly put your foot down and let people know, I'm not doing that anymore, you're in an unhealthy situation and you don't find that balance. What the arena that we've been in and doing your shadow work, setting these boundaries, unpacking your traumas, dealing with this, and even exploring your birth chart is to learn balance. So getting quiet about something when you've been wronged for so long or you feel like you've been wronged for so long, it's doing the exact opposite. And you can't do the exact opposite to an extreme because you're still not creating that balance within yourself or within and showing people that, okay, now I'm balanced. Now I'm not interested in overly doing anything I don't want to. Um, a beautiful quote that I found about boundaries um, is also about compassionate people. It says, compassionate people ask for what they need. They say no when they need to. And when they say yes, they mean it. They're compassionate because their boundaries keep them out of resentment. And it was interesting that, um, and that was by Brene Brown, the quote, excuse me, um, I always give credit, credit to those people because they're smart, they deserve it. Um, it's interesting that resentment came up because you can get in a place to resent your friends, resent your family, resent the people you're in relationships with, partnerships, even at work, because they've taken you for granted if you haven't said no when you needed to say no. And now you're looking at their life, looking at the things that they're getting, and you're like, well, why aren't I getting that? That's not fair to me. So your jealousy comes from jealousy into envy, from envy into resentment. This can happen in work relationships. I can say specifically um, with myself and if anybody has any experiences in work that they wanna speak about, I'm super open to hearing. Um, I'm very hardworking and I'm a fast learner. So things come natural to me and I'm super organized. I've gotten into situations where people take those things for granted and give me more than my job description. And, you know, I want to learn as much as I can learn because knowledge is power in my, how I was raised. So learning as much as I know and being aware as much as I'm aware of, I can handle a lot. But then if you're leaving every day at 3.30 because I'm doing your work until 6, how is that fair? You're scheduled till 4.30, I'm scheduled till 5. Why am I staying an hour past my time to do work that is not even in my job description. You're now taking advantage of me and knowing that I'm not gonna leave anything unfinished or sign anything with my name on it to say, yeah, I did it and it was halfway. Nope. So now you now that you're aware of that, you're okay with taking advantage of that. And unfortunately, when I finally spoke up, it was seen as then a hostile work environment which is fine. That's okay. It can be hostile for you now because I'm not allowing you to leave at three o'clock and leave me in this office by myself to do the work that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. But without finally standing my ground and unfortunately, you know, things turn even more sour in that work situation, but without me standing my ground, I would have been continued to be used and abused in a way that was not fair to me. And it took stepping away from the job for two weeks for me to even recognize like, I'm extremely overworked here. I am doing more than I should. Why is that the case? Why did I allow that? And it was, I wanted to learn as much as I could learn, but I'm learning all of this and, and what is it doing for me if I'm now unhappy and I now hate coming to work. I now am happy when you are, when I am in the office by myself because I don't have to deal with you. But that was also spirit letting me know maybe it's time to move on. And maybe it's time to figure out when and how to say no to situations before they get this bad. 
because boundaries are set so that you don't get to a place of resentment, unhappiness, what have you. But if you don't set them early enough on, you're kind of in a tough spot. Um, the ne next thing that I wanted to discuss is also boundaries in relationships and recognizing when you start to grow and change that the people around you don't always know how to deal with you. Um, there's a new edition song that Miss Kim um, played for me. And I'm gonna pull the song up. I should have had it ready, I apologize. But the lyrics in the song say, um, you're the kinds of woman that a man's dreams are made of. And in the song, he's explaining how it's not your looks, it's not your hair, it's not that you're not beautiful, but it's that I'm still a child and I'm not ready to be the man that the woman that you are deserves. And sometimes what happens is with that boundary, a relationship has to end. It, it's over and it's unfortunate. But when you think about that and you even think about that in friendships, sometimes you are at a level higher than people and they don't know how to get to that level. So they dream about you. They also become jealous because it's, I might have all the potential to be your equal, but I still wanna play around and I still wanna not rise to my full occasion. And that's not okay either. Because then what they're doing is dragging you down or they're playing a game with you. I'll show you glimmers of what I can be occasionally every few months and we'll be good for that little bit of time. But then I'm gonna just go back to being the child, the immature person, the maybe they're not as emotionally intelligent as they should be. So they go back to that. They revert back to that because we're all human and it's understandable that you would do that, but it's not okay. And though it's great that you recognize that I'm what a man dreams of or a woman dreams of or a friend dreams of, what have you, but that doesn't mean that you get to hold on to me because one day you're going to finally get there. I can't wait for one day. I can't wait for someday. So when you set those boundaries for people and you make them rise to those occasions, like I said, some of them are either going to get with it or they're going to get lost. And it's not your responsibility to look at the people who are getting lost and say, come on, come on, please, please rise to rise to this occasion, get here, because then you're holding yourself back and you're limiting yourself. Something really awesome that um, Ms. Kitten said to me in one of my sessions in regards to this also is, um, the wonders that you have given me, um, I'm angry that you did not see the value within yourself of what you've given to me. And that though there is potential there, you choose to be who you are. So I have to let you choose to be that because the weight of what I of what you're requiring me to carry is more than I than I want to and more than I should. And that comes not just within, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife situations. That comes in friendships too. I had to recognize even within my friendships that I had been holding on to people because we have been friends for over 20 years. But in those 20 years, you've always crossed the line for me. And then when I asked you to do the same, you couldn't. And I like to say that in my friendships, I don't require much from people. I'm usually pretty self-sufficient and like can get through. But then the moment I do require something from someone and they can't show up for me, 
it makes me look at our entire friendship and say, maybe you never really showed up and maybe I never really held you accountable for that. And that's what boundaries also teach you. They teach you to hold people accountable for their actions and accountable for what they say and do. And when those are not in alignment, you as a person have to make a choice. Am I gonna allow you to continue to be here to understand and respect my boundaries or do I just have to let you go? And that's not easy either. I've lost, I lost a friendship with someone for, that I had for over 20 years because she didn't hear and understand and respect my boundaries and didn't recognize the moments when I needed her. But it's not to say she's lost forever. It's just to say our lives went like this and maybe they'll come back around and go like this and we'll be the best of friends and it'll be like we only lost a little bit of time. But you got to grow and learn and know. Um, I might have got off on the tangent and forgot part of what I wanted to speak about tonight. Oh, another thing about um, unhealthy boundaries is um, also recognizing signs of when you're doing or have done things that are unhealthy. So another unhealthy boundary um, that you might place is like letting everybody know about themselves. So when somebody's done you wrong, well, you did this and I didn't like that. You don't always have to be that, that way. You don't always have to be so outspoken. Or also when you, you talk too much, um, I can say I also have this um, that I need to pull into balance. I, I communicate very effectively, but I have the tendency to over communicate. Um, and it's not because I think people don't understand me, but sometimes what I also recognize is the level of control. I want people to acknowledge and understand what I'm saying and see things from my point of view. And it's not that you have to agree with my point of view, but I need you to acknowledge that you hear what I'm saying, you understand me. So when you don't, I need to explain it to you again in a different way. And then I remain in that place, which could also be seen as stubborn until you make that acknowledgement. That's not good. So what I have had to learn is be quiet, change the way that you move, and you really only need to explain yourself once. Because if you know you communicate effectively, why do you need to say it 30, 40, 50 times? They heard you the first time. It's either they wanted to listen or they didn't. Exactly. It's not our resp responsibility. Everybody's not going to be able to hear what you have to say and be accepting in that moment. You have to be able in a place to receive what somebody's saying to you. So um, I have been learning to be more silent and um, also like shift that within myself, which has not been easy at all. So much so that I just really had to learn to be quiet because I talked way too much. <laughs> um, so I don't know if I'm gonna hop in the chat. I don't know if anyone has anything that they would like to add. Um, I'm going to cool. wrap it up and then go into a part two then. So um, we're going to wrap up this here part of Ashley's teaching and then she's going to answer questions. And so we'll upload that um, as well. Blessings.
So you did a great job. Thank you. Good job, Ashley. It was a good